Hey guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started with reading this afternoon. So you're going to need your journeys book open to page 505 for Arrow and Officer Mike. And then you'll also need one of these author's purpose papers. So once you have those things, you'll be ready to get started. Okay, so yesterday you guys did an activity all about author's purpose. And we talked about PI, the acronym PI, P-I-E, standing for the different reasons that an author might write a story. We have persuade inform and entertain okay so when an author is trying to persuade someone of something they're convincing them to agree with their opinion or their way of thinking to inform is is meaning that an author is giving us information or facts about a topic so we can learn more about it okay and to entertain is exactly what it sounds like it's just it's a story for fun um, but one thing I really want to make sure we understand is there is there are ways that stories can have more than one purpose. So there might be stories that are both trying to inform and persuade or inform and entertain. But typically within one story, there's one main purpose that the author wrote that story. So we're going to look at our story, Arrow and Officer Mike, our journey story for the week. And we're going to try and figure out what the reason was, what the purpose was for the author writing this story. Okay, so we're going to get started. We're going to find three clues within our story to help us figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to look first. I think I have an idea which purpose it's going to be. I'm going to choose either entertain or inform, but I want to find some more clues to see if I can help support that decision. So we're going to look back in our text. So let's just kind of take a second, look back through the book. What do you notice? What stands out to you? What is the author trying to do? One thing is I'm flipping through that I'm noticing a lot of are photographs, which is a kind of text feature. And these photographs are really giving us an idea of what Arrow and Officer Mike are doing throughout their day. It shows pictures of him at the vet, of Arrow doing his training, when they take a break. So to me, that is a clue that the author's trying to tell us about Arrow and what he does. So for clue number one, we're going to write, so you're writing with me. The author includes photographs of Arrow doing his job. Okay, so I would say that's one clue that kind of hints at what the author is trying to tell us through this story. So the author includes photographs of Arrow doing his job. Let's take a little bit more time just to finish writing. And then we can start looking at clue number two. So let's keep flipping through our story. What else do you notice as you're looking? So pause the video back there if you needed to finish writing. If not, let's keep looking. Let's see, how else does the author organize this writing? So we saw photographs on every page, but I'm also noticing something else on every single page almost. Take a second to think about what these big, bold red words up here at the top are called. They're another kind of text feature, and they are headings. So let's think back to when we learned about text features and what that means for headings. So with headings, they kind of introduce us to what that page is going to be about, kind of to give us a little bit of a preview. So for Arrow's sense of smell, that tells us, okay, this page is going to be about Arrow's sense of smell, okay? Or at the vets, that tells us, to give us kind of an idea, that's what we're gonna be reading about on this page. So it's very helpful that the author kind of broke down the book, broke down the story into headings. That way we know kind of the different parts of what we're going to be reading about. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna write for number two. I think that's very helpful in kind of letting us know what is going on in the story. So the author uses headings The author uses headings to introduce
different parts of Arrow's job. So that's clue number two. So I feel like I'm really starting to get a good idea as to what main purpose the author had for writing this story. Let's find one more clue. Okay, so we've looked at the photographs. Pause the video, go back a little bit if you need to finish writing, but we're gonna move on to clue three. Okay, so let's look back at our pages. We've talked about the photographs, we've talked about the headings, okay, and we've read our story twice, so we should be pretty familiar with what's on these pages. And I remember as we were reading through the first few times, there are so many facts all over throughout this entire story. Talking about, once again, his sense of smell, what he does for training. So every page has lots of facts about Arrow's day and what he does. So that's what we're going to write for clue number three. Pretty simple. Each page gives many facts. about what police dogs do. Okay, so that's gonna be our last clue. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you guys, different stories can have more than one purpose. So I would say, if I had to choose a second purpose after my first choice, I would probably look at entertain because this is an entertaining story, especially if you like dogs or like learning about what police officers do. It's very entertaining and it kind of gives us a window into what their days look like and gives us a lot of just fun information um, about what they do. So I would say the second purpose would be to entertain, but after looking at those three clues, I would say, our number one purpose would be inform. So let's all circle inform. So I would say the purpose of the author writing this story would be to give us more information about what police dogs do. So you guys did a really good job following along. Like I said, if you missed anything, go ahead and pause the video now and make sure you have all of your clues written down. We're gonna go ahead and stop there. So please make sure your name is at the top of this assignment and go turn it in. When you are finished, you may do, may do quietly. Very good job following along, you guys.